You're listening to Elite Radio, the podcast for repair shop owners by repair shop owners. Welcome back to Elite Radio, and uh, thanks for joining us for the next episode in our series of In the Coach's Corner, where we focus on the highlighting the success and struggles of being a shop owner, as well as the relationships built through coaching. I'm your host, Darren Barney, and I'm here with uh, Corey LaJoy and John Francis, and uh, I'm really excited to be here with both of these guys. Um, we, uh, um, Gall, John's been a coach with us for years, and uh, and Corey has also been a client with us for years. So, um, John, would you mind uh, doing a little bit of an introduction and tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> sure. I've uh, been in this business for, uh, <laughs> I guess I'm proud to say, over 50 years. Uh, so I started in a new car dealership, making two bucks an hour, and uh, opened my own business up in 1979, and uh, recently sold it to my son. Uh, and had I was a coach, uh, excuse me, I was being coached uh, by our godfather, Jim Ferrano, for eight years. Uh, and, and then um, Bob asked me to become a coach. And I says, yeah, I said, I'd, I'd love to do that. So uh, and what, 11 years later. So I've been in this coaching thing for about 20 years. Uh, love every minute of it. Most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life other than having kids. So. No, oh, that's awesome, John. I really appreciate you being here with us. John has actually been a coach with Elite for over a little over nine years now. Isn't that right, John? Yeah. 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 And you got some cool dogs and you're there with your wife, Michelle. And yeah, you've made a pretty good life for yourself, my friend. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for John uh, for being here with us. And uh, Corey, you're up next. All right. Well, a uh, little bit about me. I guess uh, I've been doing this now for well, my entire career, but I used to work for a company for a long time for like almost 10 years before I went on my own. And the only reason I really got started was because the side work got to be too much and right. decided to take the plunge. And, uh, it was, it was interesting getting going, but honestly, if I hadn't found John and elite, there's no way I would, uh, be here. That's for sure. Yeah. So it's been a, it's been a great, uh, great time. Amazing how that, uh, coaching helps out, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't even know it was a thing, to be honest yeah. with you. <laughs> well, we'll talk more about that in just a minute. But I got to say, first off, congratulations on making it 12 years. You know, it's uh, a big accomplishment for, I assume you were a technician before, right? Yeah. Yeah. I started off as a fuel injection specialist. That's what I did. I did only diesel fuel injection and it got kind of boring, to be honest with you. So right. started wrenching yeah. on trucks and yeah, here I am. That's awesome. Well, and that's, I mean, you'd be surprised. Maybe you wouldn't be, but we see that all the time with people that come to us and they're like, yeah, you know, I was a technician and I said, I want to own my own shop. And it's really common to hear that, you know, and yeah. there's such a difference between being a technician and being a business owner. And that's. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also good. We got to hear about this 05 Dodge of yours too. Um, we were talking earlier and he was telling me he has this 05 Dodge is pushing over a thousand horse and I've got, I had no two for years. And so I want to hear a little bit more about that too, Corey. So yeah, no. but <laughs> anyway, so thank you guys both for being here. Um, when it came up to interview, you know, John and, and Corey, and I was like, man, this is awesome. You know, cause it's something that people love to hear stories of, of guys just like yourself, Corey, that uh, have grown something and done it once again for 12 years. I mean, most small businesses don't last that long and for you to do it. I mean, that's congratulations on that. You know? Yeah. Thank so, you. But, uh, anyway, so thank you guys again. And, uh, I just kind of wanted to ask you guys, you know, I mean, first off, I guess, Corey, you know, ask you what, what made you want to reach out for a coach in the first place? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I had no idea coaching was a thing. Uh, right. I didn't know it existed. I never heard of it. I was, my business at the time was growing faster than I knew how to handle it. And actually Jasper, my rep from Jasper, he turned me on to a, a, like a presentation that Bob and I think it was Dolores putting on yeah. locally. Doris. Doris, yeah. So I yeah. Uh, I signed up for it and I went and I you know, had my hesitations. It almost seemed too good to be true. And and I talked to a couple of people I know that are different industries, but I asked them about this coaching thing, if it was actually worked. And according to them, they're big companies they work for. They use them too. So right. I figured, what the hell? I was about, I felt I was at my last straw. I didn't know what else to do. I'd right. reached my, my point of, I had no idea what I was doing. So. So when I you say that, on. 
Yeah, I mean, what does that mean when you say that you know you you didn't know what else to do because you? Were I knew how to right? turn wrenches. I knew how to fix trucks. I knew all that, but I had no idea how to run a business and make it profitable. I didn't understand the pro- the P and Ls. I didn't understand, you know, how to figure out how to charge the right amount or you know just different ways of going about you know your your troubleshooting charges or you know not yeah. Um, keeping track of the guy's time, or just all of that, you know, what's fair pay, what uh, good benefits, stuff like that. I, I was just didn't know. Like we always say, you don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah, I definitely did, didn't know. Yeah. That's awesome though, that you had that inspiration enough to, uh, to reach out and, and get that extra help, you know, especially uh, all those years ago. Can you imagine how different your life would be if you hadn't had that extra guidance from John? Yeah, I honestly would probably be back to working for somebody else just because right. I, it was, it was just too much. Didn't know yeah. how to handle it. So, uh, yeah, and that's great. Thank you for sharing that. What what do you think that uh, – how did John help you with all that stuff? Uh, well, I mean, first thing first, you know, we, he kind of explained to me, you know, how – to how the uh, business runs, how to delegate, how to, cool. how you know, numbers, how to figure out, uh, you know, your your cost of doing business. That was the biggest thing. That was a huge eye-opener is, you know, how much it costs us to open the doors and walk in in the morning and turn the lights on. Right. Now, I didn't know. I didn't think about that stuff. I just thought about fixing that truck in there and getting it done. Right. You know. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's true. And John, what do you remember first about, I mean, I know it was all those years ago, but, you know, what do you remember about helping Corey? What were some of your early memories of that stuff? I remember, uh, I remember the first call, Corey. I remember the first call. Oh. I remember because, uh, Doris and Bob were doing the Jasper classes and I remember that um, I had a lead and, and I just like big trucks. I learned, I learned things from Corey every day. I learned something new today about how diesel can over rev. And, and I always thought that they couldn't because they had a governor on them, but right. I, I'm always learning. And and the two of us are, are, are really, you know, have things turn around and what a future he's got. But I remember the first call, like, okay, how am I going to, there, there's so many things in, in big truck business uh, and I have two other people that do trucks, but nobody yeah. like Corey in heavy duty. We had to adjust from cars to trucks, uh, but thinking on the feet and, and those kind of things. And, and we got our arms around the business and that takes a little bit of time. And right. uh, one of the great, great things about Corey is very coachable. You know, we, we, we talk about things, we discuss them and then we decide to do them and then we do them and execute and follow through. Um, but I remember the first call saying, okay, we'll, we'll turn this around. We got to fix this. We can fix this. Yeah. And we still say that today, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, and that's, it's funny. Cause I, I've had people tell me before that, you know, they're like, how can somebody stay with a coach for, you know, as many years as a lot of our lead clients do. And it's like, because they're always working on something. You know, yeah. there's always something to grow and improve upon. You've always got somebody in your corner that's helping to push you along and prod you and make sure that you're going in the right direction. Well, they also hold you accountable. And I like that because yeah. I had nobody, you know, my wife would tell me things, but I would, you know, what the hell does she know? <laughs> so it's like, you know, I got, I got John and, uh, yeah. that's big for me because I need someone to hold me accountable. Well, it's, it's important that accountability things. is huge. You know, yeah, I can remember when, when I had my coach and it would be literally the hour before and I would be like, just doing everything I could and sending out emails and doing all this stuff that I had to do because I knew my call was coming up and jo- and Kevin, he, you know, used to be my coach and he was just like, yep, I can always tell when you're doing stuff because all of a sudden I start getting CC'd on all these emails <laughs> and he's like, you know, but I'm just glad you get it done. But why don't you try to get it done earlier in the week? He goes, you'll, you'll be much more productive. And it took me forever to catch that, but accountability of that weekly call of knowing that gosh darn it someone's gonna hold me to the fire you know yeah but yeah that's cool well i mean so tell us a little bit more Corey, about you know how your life has changed oh man it's changed in a lot of ways i mean you know and like i said when we started i was struggling uh struggling couldn't hardly pay myself because there was just so much out there so much oh didn't know how to how to manage it now, right. you know, I've housed two kids, built my wife, a giant barn, looking at building a shop here in the next couple of years in the process of buying some property. You know, I got, uh, went from three bays to seven bays and went from me and a tech to me and four other techs and a secretary. 
Uh, so it's just like, it's just, I didn't ever think it'd be possible, but you know, yeah. when you look back, it's like, well, I can't believe that, you know, we did it. And right. It uh, just seems so easy now, but it's, it's really, it wasn't, but right. you know, it yeah. was, it's well worth it. Yeah. But I mean, you think back to those days and, you know, of struggling and trying to figure out how to do everything and not having the answers and not knowing. And then all of a sudden you got somebody there that's kind of like a Superman guy. Yeah. I mean, that's always think of John if as I, a Superman. You know, it's true. If I have a, I've had some issues in the past where I'll text John and, and be like, I don't know how to deal with this particular customer because I don't have patience with people. I'm not a people person, <laughs> I guess you could call it. Right. And I would, you know, I, before I would say or do anything, I talked to John and he'd calm me down and give me some ideas and, you know, I could execute it a much more professional manner yeah. where before I couldn't do that. So, that so was a, some, that's a big thing. I got to ask. I mean, so what's some of the things he would tell you when you were fired up and you were, you know, whatever. It may yeah, be. He would try to make me see both sides of it. That's always the biggest thing, you know, we'll put yourself yeah. in the customer's shoes too. And that, that was always a tough thing for me because, you know, I'd get defensive right off the bat, whether I knew I was right or wrong. John right. would always, he always still to this day, well, you got to, you know, can you see how this guy feels? And, and then all at the same time, I might feel bad for somebody and be like, Oh no, don't feel bad. You didn't, you know, you didn't charge him for that. Or you didn't, you didn't offer that service and, or he declined it. And, you know, it makes you see a little bit more of it. And, uh, of course it just, it just helps me to see it better. He just knows how, how I operate. Sometimes I get tunnel vision and he kind of expands my vision. Right. And that's a good thing of a coach, right? Yes. And especially when it's somebody like John, once again, John to sing your praises, but he's been down the road many times before. Yeah. I feel like, you know? like we've have a lot of similarities. Yeah, <laughs> we do. We do. But that's, I mean, that's a good coach. You know, it, it's somebody that, that can help you to see the other side of the coin and, and help you to, uh, you know, think outside the box and calm you down when you're worked up. And I never will forget Kevin telling me that same thing. I was, I was upset with one of my employees and been with me for a while and it was something really silly, but I was really worked up and I texted Kevin and Kevin said, call me. So I called him and he's like, calm down. He's one of your best techs. You, you've got to take care of him. He's like, calm down, you know? And it's like, okay, all right. But it's amazing because I was fired up, you know, and I hate to think what would have happened without that little bit of encouragement. The guy's still with me all these years later and he's still with me. He's a great tech. He's a good friend of mine. And you know, sometimes you just got to calm down and have somebody say, Hey, take a deep breath. It's okay. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And it, I remember it was something that was silly that, uh, you know, it was just a miscommunication on, and I thought he wasn't following procedure. And this guy was like, he just didn't know that we had changed the procedure and there was just some mix ups, but it was something that was completely not something that he chose to do. And it, to this day, I still feel kind of bad that I had gotten so worked up with this guy, but you know, amazing how those coaches can do that and help you see things through the, you know, as they say, you can't see the forest through the trees sometimes. So definitely, but yeah. What about you, John? Do you have anything you want to add to that? Well, not necessarily. I mean, he, he's very coachable and Darren, right. you know how that works. Uh, uh, yeah. the, 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 the old saying is uh, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And that, that's how I look at a lot of times when I get hooked up with a client, it's like we're supposed to be. You know, and, and yeah. uh, with Corey, we, 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 you know, have a special relationship after so many years, but everybody is different. So you have to adjust, but, but Corey, you just, uh, I mean, I'm just proud beyond words. I mean, the new shop coming and I mean, it, it's four acres across the street that, that wow. hopefully by October or November we'll have under contract uh, awesome. to do. And, and that comes out of a, a, a plan that Joe and I created for, him, you know? Yeah. Along with so a couple other things we're doing too in, in personal life, but uh, just great. And yeah, the, the other thing is, as far as you'll probably bring this up, but one of the things is Corey's shop is an EVT shop, emergency okay. vehicle technician. So he's one of, I tried to find a number last night and I couldn't because I, I couldn't get into it. But when I did find it, it was somewhere around 7,500 in the country. So wow. his shop does fire trucks and are growing that part of the business too. Fire trucks, did you say? Fire yes. trucks. EVT stands for Emergency Vehicle Technician, and okay. Corey is certified, which means that for every ASE test that has to be current, there's a comparable EVT test to that. So he went wow. as far as Maine to go through these. Didn't you have to go to Maine for a couple classes? Uh, uh, I, I never ended up going. I went to, just out to Boston mm -hmm. for a couple in Worcester, but I was able to get a level one 
Uh, there's three levels total. The first two have to do with vehicle repair and maintenance. And then the third one is fire apparatus, which we don't get involved with. But I've got my level one certification. It takes a long time to get them. They, don't hold, they only hold testing twice a year. Wow. Huh. That's a cool thing to know about, though. Well, it is, and, and, I mean, and we're, we're creating a package right now to go after fire companies, and, and he's got a, a road service truck that we can do on-site DVIs at the firehouse and then get the parts and then keep the downtime on the fire trucks, which is real important because yeah. you just don't drop a fire truck off for service. They have to unload all the hoses, all the fittings, all these kind of things. So it's wow. it's a real niche that we're going to go after, and I think with Mark's help as service manager, it's, it's another market that we're going to capture. That's yeah. really cool. Huh. What a cool market, huh? Yeah, there's not many shops that specialize in it. So Yeah. Well, I mean, why not? Especially, I mean, if you got the aptitude to learn that and and do that, I mean, why not? I mean, that's yeah. you specialize in the heavy line stuff. So I mean, that's kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the best part is you have any contraction in, in the economy at all, and you've got kind of some guaranteed work with the government there too. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that's important. That's cool. Good for you. What, what made you want to do that? I mean, how did you find out about this EVT thing? Uh, the, well, John is the one that, he's the one that looked it up and found out. I didn't even know there was a thing about it. Right. And I had been doing work for the, the town that I'm in. Um, they're a very busy fire company, and I've been doing a lot of work for them over the years. And uh, John had, had mentioned, I don't even know how you found out about it, but he, he was the one that found out about it. I'm almost sure of it. Yeah, and yeah. I looked into it and I asked uh, the guy, the fire chief and the, and the maintenance guy that I deal with at the firehouse, this one specific one. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, they have a testing and it's coming up. Uh, there's one. So he gave me the whole booklet and I studied it and took the test and I passed. So I signed up for the next one. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Good for you. So oh. it, it's it's not like a requirement, but it looks much better. It's almost like a lot of fire. So there was a big uh, incident years back in in my state on the other end of the state with a fire truck and on a brake failure right so now they a lot of places outsource it or they require you to be certified in brakes and truck repair to, to do it right and that's like a one more certification that you have to you know cover yourself yeah and just you know everybody feels better about it well, I mean, yeah. is there's something about the certification, but there's also just about the knowledge that comes from just learning, going to class and, and just gaining your knowledge base. You yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah. Um, and didn't we, Corey, did, didn't we create a, uh, a, a six month break check DVI? That you yeah. Know? So I do it for three of the firehouses. I go every six months and do a DVI just on brakes and brake components. So it's mainly air brake stuff, yeah. but one of the firehouses, they run uh, the, the local one. We do all their ambu- well, most of their ambulance work, too. So that's a whole separate EVT certification. But that's uh, we do those brake inspections more frequent because the amount that they get used. Yeah. Um, it's, it's helped. I mean, it it's kept their downtime uh, to a minimum, you know, breakdowns. And then, of course. Uh, you know, it's helped with work, too, bringing more work in. Well, yeah, it just, once again, it's that guaranteed work. Do you charge these guys for the DVIs or is it something oh, yeah. you do as a No, I go there and do awesome. it and I charge. It's like, you know, depending on the truck, it's, you know, it's usually like a half hour a truck and I spend right. a few hours here, do them all. And, and yeah. then I'll send them the reports that afternoon. And I usually get an email or a phone call the next day, make an appointment to get, start getting stuff fixed. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> So it's definitely worked out. It's, it's grown. It's been, it was slow in the beginning, but it's definitely getting up, you know, words getting out and, and, uh, seems to be going good. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. We're, yeah. We're great job, John, a, on finding that. So we're creating a flyer now that we're going to go out and like cold call it, but hand write letters to fire chiefs in the area of the small fire companies. Yeah. Uh, and, and talk about the features and benefits of bringing fire trucks to CL diesel. Right. Can I pause this and let my dogs in real quick? Would that be yeah, a of course you can. Of course. Okay. Well, you guys, we were talking about the relationship earlier and, and talking about how, you know, you push each other. So tell us about a time, uh, Corey, where John pushed you a little bit stronger than maybe he should have or that you felt he should have and then he ended up being good. Or do you have any of those type of stories? Uh, not that I recall. I mean, I feel like 
if if John if he comes up with like he's always got great ideas, but if there's an idea that maybe I don't particularly care for that much, which there really hasn't been too many, I can't even that I can think of. You know, I just I don't know. I usually do. I don't want to know if I want to try that right now, or or we might try something different, or take a different approach to right. it. But yeah, he's never. I will say that he's never, ever, ever been pushy about anything. Oh, well, that's cool. So, that's a good thing. Yeah. Knowing John, he probably just brings it back up to you a few times. He does. He, I, I, I do know some that I've noticed that he'll bring it up weekly. Yeah. And I'll. It might take me. I can be dense sometimes, but you know, I'll, yeah. I'll figure it out soon enough. Right. What are you laughing about, John? Well, I'm just laughing because it's, but you know, it's it's true. I mean, you just you, you pick your battles. That's all, you know. And and, yeah. and you, there's times where, you know, like you said, do you charge for DVI? You know, of course we charge for DVI. You know, I it's hope like, so, yeah. uh, you know, and and it's something new that that, and this comes out of uh, Corey and Mark. Mark is his service manager. They went to the Eagles the second time, this right? Last October, I think it was, and out of that, you know, they both like got supercharged and they're still supercharged from the last Eagles class. Uh It's it's almost a year, but um, we do charge now. We offer two levels of DVIs and, and Corey was mentioning to me that Mark, you know, sold a big maintenance job on the truck and, and Mark couldn't believe it. And he was tickled pink, right, Corey? Oh yeah. He's yeah. The guy went for the whole thing Yeah, and you know, these aren't, you know, small jobs. So. Right. Especially with you have with the big stuff you do. Yeah. yeah and, he paid, and he paid for the DVI, we, you know, right. which is important and it gives it value, but. Of course. Yeah. Well, and that's, uh, you know, something that, I mean, so many people shops don't even do good vehicle inspections. It always amazes me. It's like, if you're not doing good vehicle inspections, you're doing a disservice to your customer. You know, oh, I mean, you're doing not to mention business for the shop too, but you know, there's nothing worse than having a customer, you do an oil change and then they come back later and they're like, yeah, you know, I had this other shop do this ball joint when I had it aligned and you're like, we do alignments and we do ball joints in house, you know, but you don't do an inspection. You don't know that. You know? It's just amazing to me, but that's cool. Huh. All right. So, um, yeah, well, I can't believe that there was no other time though where where John pushed you too bad, Corey. That's no, that's cool. I can't think of anything. He he's always been great. Like I, you know, like I yeah. said, he he definitely will circle back around until we come yeah. to a mutual agreement. But he's never pushed. Not not that I can remember anyway. There's never been a time where I felt, uh, you know, pushed into doing something. Yeah. Well, and we we've come up with some. I won't strange, but non non-car sh- car business methods because it's just different i mean the truck rolls in the shop it might be right. two three weeks before it rolls out of the shop so with car business it's in and out the same day so yeah we had to get into a real extensive um technician time management to in order to to compute these hours because the guys get paid each week of course but we, we had we've done some really cool things with this shop and and Corey's been yes to it all, you know, and, and the benefits are, you know, what we have today. Yeah. So, well, I mean, and that's, it's funny because I got kind of sidetracked here, but you know, I was thinking about your four acres that you're doing in this big shop you're building. I mean, that's kind of a huge, uh, payoff of, of, of working hard all these years and being able to build your own shop. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah. I'm I'm excited. Something I didn't think I could ever do to be honest with you, but you know, I can see it now and I can, I'm already been designing and trying to figure out, you know, different ways to set it up. So looking yeah. forward to it. That's so what cool. We say, Corey, got to own that dirt, tired of paying rent. That's right. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Well, I mean, but you know, the thing is, is the best part is you go to sell the business years down the road or whatever. You've got something that's worth, you know, that's worth money too, besides the business itself. That's what yeah. owning real estate is so important because you're paying it anyway. Why not pay it to yourself? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And That's we, so we cool. Talk, we, we talked about that. And, and Corey also, one of the key things, you know, with coaching, I believe, is having a good accountant. So he has a good accountant. I like Steve. We were talking about Steve today. Yeah. So Steve and I are always on the same page. Uh, so that's helpful. <laughs> right. That's a good thing. So, and Corey mentioned P&Ls that we're, we're looking at them. You know, we're, we're going over them. Uh, the Bible still is our performance report, you know, right, but yeah. we, we do look at P and L's and stuff like that. So, uh, well, but I mean, 
it's not just important for the business owner, but it's also important when you go for that loan. That banker is definitely going to look at that P&L. Oh, absolutely. You know? And that's why this Steve is really good. And, and Corey's done some other things with planning for the future and his legacy that we, him and I have talked about. And oh, that's business. awesome. And the building will be part of that legacy, you know, yeah. for, for, for generations in the family. You know, you know what's, what's cool though, Corey, is you think back about this. I mean, once again, I'm a shop owner too. Right. And, and I mean, I had to, I had to hire a coach. My brother and I, you know, had a shop for all these years and it was one of those things that we were awesome at taking care of people and fixing vehicles, but I didn't know anything about business. And, uh, those struggles and those conversations in the very beginning were so different than the discussions that we have today. You mm-hmm. know, now it's talking about entirely different things. Just like you're talking about a legacy. I mean, yeah. you think about it, you go, you go back to, you know, all those years ago when you started working with John, would you ever thought that you'd be thinking about how you're going to leave an impact upon, you know, your family when you, when you, no, you know, retire? definitely not. Definitely I mean, not. That's so cool. You're making a difference, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's something that I remember when I was a kid, my dad told me, he says, you know, son, you got to be careful with how you do things because, you know, you only have a short time here upon the earth and what you do to leave a difference upon the earth is, is up to you. And you're the only one that can do it. And you can either leave a good difference or a bad difference. He said, we're all given the same life. And I thought that was really interesting. And to, to this day, I'm always constantly reminding myself, it's like, do I want to be remembered as somebody who made a difference in the earth or somebody that, uh, you know, died and nobody even cared. You know? Yeah, that's, that's good. That's, that's real good. Was is, I, not to regress here, but I mean, but it was, it was something I went to my, my dad's funeral and I stood there and uh, he had cancer and he, and he passed away. And I stood in line for two hours after the funeral to meet all these people that had touched his life or that he had touched their lives. And it yeah, was like, yeah. I mean, I was, I, I seriously, I still get emotional when I think about it because it was, it was so like, I want to be that someday, you know? Absolutely. And it's like, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm proud of you guys though for doing that because you're making a difference, man, you know? So anyway, sorry. I think it's awesome. I really do. I love to hear that because that, that's what coaching's about. That's what that's why we do what we do is because make a difference, you know. So, but yeah. All right, cool. John, anything you want to add on that before I go on? Well, you can go on. I have some things to add, but no, that's it's it's you know we've all learned from from people through our lives that that you know we were short time on here and uh, and, and legacies. Yeah not what it's about, but you know, you want people to remember you. And Corey and I've yeah. talked about, you know, the dirt what counts at this point. Well, it does, yeah. you know, uh, and I, I got I just got to talk about building the, the shop, Corey. This is one of the, I, I've done it with a couple of my clients where they move into a new building or they're building one. And it is so uh-huh. much fun to go through and plan out. I just love that part because we literally, I did it when I moved into my new building, it wasn't new, but it was new to us. And we went in and, and lived with Kevin and we like, we mapped everything out. We figured out where we we're going to put the compressor. And it was so much fun to get even my techs involved and my brother and everybody was all looking at this, this, you know, drawing that we had. And it's like, well, we're going to put the oil thing. Where are we going to put this? Where are the welders going to go? And it was so much fun to have everybody involved and have a say. In yeah. That, so I'm looking forward to it. I'll be honest with you. I mean, I am. <laughs> Yeah, we we went through this thing called Six Sigma, and I'm sure that that uh, that John will talk to you about that. But it talking about the efficiency of the position, and so we found in our shop that we had to put 220, 110 air and water on a couple of the individual hoists. I mean, and so like literally, we put it all there because we wanted everything to be as efficient as possible. And if you've got to drag a welder cord, I mean, we're always welding. We do off road stuff, so each bay had to have or each hoist had to have 220 because the welder was floating around. And at that time we only had a 220 welder. Now, of course we got a 110 too, but it was one of those things that literally every hoist has air and everything there because we felt it was best. And that's what Six Sigma pointed us towards efficiency. So it was cool stuff, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited for you, man. That's, that's fun to do that, plan that out. So, but yeah, cool. Well, um, let's see here. Okay. So how about, how about your friendship? Tell me how that has developed the non-business side of things. I'm curious about that one too. Well, uh, it's funny you say that. We were just talking today. I'm, I'm taking a trip to to Wyoming with my wife here in a few weeks, and uh, John was giving me all kinds of of places to visit, and and he's at, he he blew up my email right before this call about all kinds of different places. So, you know, when it comes to to you know the friendship, I feel like you know any question, anything I want to talk about, John would gladly be there you know he's always asked about my children and my wife and how things are going it's not just all business so yeah you know i feel like uh um 
you know, even though John's, you know, six, seven hours away, he's almost like, you know, he's like a family member, you know, he's yeah. not, not far. I could talk to him about just about anything. Yep. That's really cool. For sure. <clears throat> no, John, I definitely guys... feel like we have a good relationship. No, that's, it's awesome. You know, those closest and, and stuff of having somebody in your corner that not only just cares about the business, but also cares about you personally too. And says stuff like, I don't know if John said, I, I know he has, Hey, you got to make sure you take care of yourself, you know, oh, make yeah. sure you're not talking too yeah. much about shop at home or whatever it is. You know? Yeah. 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 It's, he definitely says stuff like that. Take time off. You got to have time for yourself. The one thing he's been pushing me now for a while and I know he has, and he brings it up occasionally is taking off, start, you know, taking a half a day off weekly right. and then, try to progress it into a day off weekly and just try to take more family time. And, and I do try, but not as hard as I probably should, but yeah, you know, well, I mean, I'm going to start, start bugging you more about that because the first really bugging thing is we set a time and I'll start sending the text at that time. <laughs> is he there? Is he there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's a huge thing though, is you got to have time to get out and recharge and see things from a press fresh perspective, you know, and you're always there and you're always going. You don't see a lot of times, you know, the other things that you take a break and you come back and all of a sudden you're like, why are we doing things this way? Yeah. You know, but it's because it's muscle memory. We've been doing it all these years for this way and it works, but yet sometimes getting away and coming back, it's like fresh perspective. So yeah, that's cool. Well, the trip he's going on is the favorite place in the world. My most favorite place in the world. And Where's that? Jackson hole. Oh, cool. Yeah. So he's going, he's going to, well, Jackson's the right word for it. And that's what my wife and I got married on a stream in wow. Jackson 23 years ago. So that's I've, cool. I've climbed the Tetons multiple times and, uh, in, in various mountains around there. So I was giving Corey all the lowdowns of where to go and where to eat. And when you get off the plane, go get bagels here and stuff like that. But it's cool seeing that the family grow up. I mean, uh, mentioning about the horse barn. I mean, the horse barn was one of the top three things that he wanted to accomplish right. uh, when he started with us eight years ago. And that barn's been up for a while, but and it's a pretty big barn. Too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's been up for four years. Yeah. Tell me so, about the horse barn. What is that? Yeah. What is it? Tell well, me. my wife is big in the horses. She runs the, the barn she has now is she, you know, trains and boards quarter horses and Cool. It's not my thing, but that's what she loves. That's her passion. Yeah. And when we bought our house, we bought it because of the property, not because of the house. And that, with the goal of building a barn. Yeah. And that's what I always wanted to, you know, do that. And uh, I didn't, you know, at the time, there, I didn't think that it was going to be possible. But once I got on with my with John and with Elite, yeah, we built this barn within a couple of years, I think, two or three years. And uh, yeah, it's uh it's a full, it's, uh, it's 70 wide by 120 long. <laughs> She's got 12 stalls in it. Uh, she stores her hay in it, you know, and then on top of that, you know, she's got uh, 22 horses on the property wow. and all, you know, we have big paddock space, big turnouts. I built all the structures on the property. We raise, you know, pigs and chickens for meat and stuff. So that's like a little side hobby of mine. And, uh, you know, we just have a big farm, I guess, like a hobby farm. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And I definitely wouldn't have been able to do it without John. Definitely. He's pushing. I guess you could say if anything, that'd be the one thing he pushed me was that. It was get it done. Right. You know, and we did it. We got oh, it. Done. Yeah. And he, it sounds he, like numerous things too. Sorry, John, go ahead. He, he's shy about his daughter has won so many medals that could probably fin fill up my office. Oh with, yeah. And, and, and the, the son, we're not sure what he's going to do, but uh, this young lady was so used to driving four wheelers and then she wanted to buy a dirt bike. She wanted her dad to get her a dirt bike and, uh, but she couldn't drive two wheel. I don't know. She's driving two wheel now. Of course. She is riding a bike, but she's gotten off the dirt bike thing. Cause her, uh, her mother got her a horse last year. So she's got her own horse. Oh, so she spends a lot of time riding horses that's her that's her thing and that's you cool. follow around and yeah. you her home to the horse shows yeah we do yeah absolutely that's cool so when, what, what does that mean does she compete or what what does she yeah do? so they compete in the um i don't know the american quarter horse association so they compete around like yeah. locally for us they go to new york state a lot 
So that's where they go. And then once a year, we drive out to Columbus, Ohio for the big show and spend two weeks out there. And yeah, she's got totes. I mean, she's eight. She's been doing it now since she was five. And I mean, I can't count the totes that we have in the basement full right. of ribbons and medals <laughs> and trophies. And, you know, but that's what, she's good at it. She likes it. That's so cool. I mean, She's really good at it. And, and the family's in it. Your in-laws are part yeah, of it. My in-laws are big into it. My wife's big into it. My wife doesn't ride, though. She does. Uh, She's more of a trainer. That's what yeah. she does. Oh, but how cool is it that, uh, you know, she's able to do that and that you can go and be there with her? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, can, I take the time and I can take a couple of days off and go. And it's, you know, it's, it's fun to watch her. I, and I'll just leave it at that. That's about the only thing fun about it. But yeah, it's fun. Cool. <laughs> it's pretty funny because a couple of times over the years he's been at off on vacation and i'll right. say well can we do a call at the campsite he says oh yeah please you know so <laughs> yeah he'll get up he's sitting on a picnic table and we'll do it in a zoom call so he can get away from talking about horses for yeah you know. <laughs> well yeah but i mean that's cool enough there just having you know those big wins in your life i mean first off for shop owners i mean we kind of take it for granted uh that that you know, we have freedom in our lives. We're not chained down. I mean, for you to go and take time off and go travel and, and go and watch your daughter compete is, is it's awesome, man. That's a big yeah. win, you know? Uh, and it means a lot to her. And I, you know, I don't want to miss out on those times. So no, no I definitely like the, the, the freedom that I've created or we've created, you know, for yeah. me to have. Well, I mean, Later. you don't, you don't want to own a business, you know? I mean, you own a business to enrich your life. It's not yeah. there to be a prisoner to. And I mean, you think about those days when you first opened and you had those years without coaching and it's like, you're a prisoner, you know, and that's all you do is, I mean, I remember getting there 7 a.m. and going home at 11 o'clock at night and that was a normal lives for us. And yes, yeah. I, I did not miss kids, my kids stuff. Even when we were that busy, I would disappear and I would go to parent teacher conferences and I was always there for my kids, but it was painful. <laughs> you know, you leave and you yeah. come back and you're like, what do you mean nothing happened? What did you, what did you guys do when I was gone? But you know, then you get a coach and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, wait a minute. There's a better way to do this. And I love hearing the fact that you're able to go do that though. That's awesome. Yeah. I was, a, I was able to, to see it early on though, because I think I started with John. My daughter was very young. She was only maybe a year old. Wow. Something like that. I think. Anyway, yeah, we so, figured it out. It was, she and, was newly born because when you yeah. went to the first Eagles class, it was the first time that you and your wife, Liddy had gone away. Yeah. Yeah, since since we got married. Yeah, without her. Yeah. So it was it was fast. So even when she was first born, I still work weekends, still work late at night, and then you know, getting on the coaching and then starting to kind of see like, oh I'm gonna start missing out on a lot if I don't uh, you know change yeah. my way. So yeah, it, it definitely uh it helped. You know, it's something that uh I heard long ago and I don't even remember where I heard it, but it's like you'll you'll never remember staying at work but you will remember the things you do with your kids. <laughs> yes. You know? It's very true. And I remember my wife talking about that because we were, we ran the business together with my brother. And it's one of those things that I remember us talking about that. It's like, well, and she would throw it back at me. <laughs> you know, She's like, yeah. I understand I'm really busy, but remember that you're never going to remember your day at work, but you will remember going and watching those track and field day or whatever it was. And it's like, I'm so glad that she helped to push me there because I love looking back at that and knowing that, Hey, I was there at all of the kids activities. Although that could be, you know? So yeah. That's cool, man. Good for you. It's cool that she's doing well and she found something she likes too, because so many kids never find hobbies and things. And it's cool that you guys. Yeah, well, for that, right so. now, this is what she likes. I don't see it going away. So I only see it getting bigger. I bet that's a little sad to not have her want to ride the dirt bike as much, though, huh? No, we still ride, but she, Good. yeah, she's not as much into it, you know, which is fine. Uh, uh, that's what she likes to do. We still, that's cool. we got a big piece of property and with a lot of trails. So in the, like this time of year in the fall, once a week, twice a week, we'll take the quads out and just go ride around. And that's cool. This year, she's she's pushing. She really wants to go uh, hunting with me. So yeah, she's that's she cool. Wants to go and try it out. So we're gonna go. Good job, Dad. And we'll see. We'll see if she yeah. can sit still long enough. <laughs> well, she probably no. won't. But it's no, okay. There's there's that <laughs> bonding Doug moment. Colin. Yeah, you know, Colin's the three year old. That he's a he's a big boy. <sighs> yeah, he's a wild child. But there's that feeling though, being at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., whatever, and you're out there and you're sitting there and you're freezing to death and you're waiting for something, you know, daylight to happen and you're sitting there with your kids 
and you look over at them and you just make that eye contact and it's just like, and they lean over and there's the creak of the, of the ground and they look at you like, yeah. sorry. I mean, it's just that yeah. bonding moments. So I wouldn't trade that for anything. You know, well, I'm looking forward to it this year. This is the first year she's really like expressed a lot of interest in it. So that's cool. So you got we'll a good see. daughter, man. That's awesome. Good job, dad. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens. She's afraid though. She said, "Well, what happens if we shoot something?" I'm like, "Well, you take the next step. We're gonna yeah, we'll take care we're of it. Dress it up and bring it home." Yeah, no big deal at all. Yeah, it's not yeah. a big deal. We had that discussion, and I told my kids, "It's like you know, God. I mean, everybody's so different nowadays." But it's I told them, "It's like you know, God provided this here for us to eat, and if we shoot it and we just leave it, then we're not doing what we need to do." And so yeah, absolutely, we got this here. Let's 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 take care of it. Let's dress it. We're going to take care of the meat. I'm going to teach you guys all this stuff. And so then when it happened, they knew what was coming, and they knew why we were doing it. And my daughter still is not crazy about hunting. She can beat people up. She's a <laughs> kickboxer, fighter, boxer lady. But yeah. you know, it's funny that she to this day she still doesn't like hunting. She loves the experience of going and, and going and shooting and all that stuff. But when it comes to the, the cleaning it, you know, I, I'll look and she's got her back turned and I'm like, no, you got to get over here. You got to be a <laughs> yeah, part of this. You shot this. Right. You got to do this, you know? That's right. But yeah. You can't just do the one part. But right. Exactly. I mean, that's the easy part. You know, the shooting I is easy. Do the fish, I could do the fishing all day long, but I just never could get used to the hunting. So I'm a fisherman. So. Right. <laughs> Well, John, tell us what, what other things do you feel that, that the people that are listening today need to hear about Corey? Well, one of the things, and, and it, this is the first, and, and I, I, we've shared this um, in the company, but uh, Corey hired a trainer. And you don't hear this too much in car shops, but in a truck shop, it's, it's a little different. They, they have different engines that they deal with, but they, they cross-generate the engines in different vehicles. You know, the right. back car, like Corey can explain that. One manufacturer makes motors that goes in Peterbilt's and Max okay. and stuff. And so they can, and basically with the pickups, you got, you know, Detroit diesel, not Detroit, but GM, uh, the Duramax and the Ford Power Stroke and the Cummings. Sure. So Corey actually hired a guy, sent a guy for a week to a class in Las Vegas, a, a technician for a week of technical training, which is here again, unusual in our business. Everybody goes yeah. to vision, but this is a week hands-on training on diesels. Then he brought the guy to the shop to train everybody else. Now that's spectacular. I mean, when it comes to when's the last time you heard that happen? So Corey believes in training. Corey believes in, in uh, having the right equipment. And the other thing we were talking about, you know, things that we've done over the years that he's done that I've, I've been participated in and watched it happen, but he's got one of the most friendliest shops to work at. I mean, people love to work there. I mean, the culture in the shop is is there, you know, and, and we know how hard that is. Yeah. When it's missing, it's hard to build it. It uh, is. But it's not impossible, but it's hard. Trust me. I just got through with it with one, one client. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's something I loved. I saw a Facebook post, and in, in fact, uh, you know, John shared it with me first, and then I went and I saw it too, and it was like talking about bringing the family to work day. Yeah. You yeah. know? That is such an awesome like idea. You know, they, they do two events a year. Uh, last year they went to Lake Winnipesaukee, which doesn't mean anything to the people that aren't on the East Coast, but I know right. where it is. And they had a house a couple of blocks away from the beach, and and everybody was there with their families and kids. And they do that, and they go to the casinos for Christmas time, and they go bowling at the casinos and dinner. And so they they're big on community inside of their their company too, and that in turn helps the culture, you know? Yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about this, bring your, your, your kids to work day. How does that work? I mean, we're not talking about like, you know, where you have to take them because somebody else is sick in the family and you got to well, So there. the reason so. it started, so I bring my kids to work like once a week. So, you know, I used to bring my daughter to work every Friday it was, it was just known she'd be up, we'd go. And then my son started to want to come. So all my technicians, employees, except for one, they all have children and they're young. You know, it's right. a young group of guys and, uh, you know, they would ask, well, you know, he, you know, my son uh, wants to come to work with me for a little while. And then, and then that next guy would be like, oh, you know, same thing. And it just, I don't, I hate to seem like, I don't want to be that, that business owner. That's like, oh, look at me. I can do this, but you can't. Right. And I just feel like everybody should be equal and, but having kids running around isn't the safest thing either. And <laughs> my insurance probably wouldn't like to know it, hear about it, but I just came up with a day. I just ran the, the idea. I think, I don't know if 
if I ran the idea by John first. We talked about wife, it. We talked about we it. We did talk about it. And I brought it up to the guys. And I was like, listen, everybody wants to bring their kid to work. I said, what if we just make a day out of it? And so yeah. the kids aren't going to have the patience to sit, stay eight hours at the shop. There's no way. No way. You know, they're any, they range from three to eight years old. There's, it's just not possible. Yeah. yeah. So we planned it a day to where they come in in the morning we have breakfast and, you know, they guys had a little bit of work. We just, you know, scheduled the day, right. They got to finish a job or do an oil change or whatever service. And then we just, I usually every year do like a shop picnic or barbecue at the house. And right. I figured I would just incorporate it all in one day. So it was it worked out perfect. It was a blazing hot day and kids came to work. We left at like half a day around 11 o'clock, went to my house, had lunch. They swam in the pool. Had a couple of beers and it was, you know, it's just a great That's day awesome. and it worked out and, uh, you know, they want to do it again next year. So, well, I mean, but that culture thing is so huge. Yeah. You know? That's one thing I will say. I feel that I am probably the most proud of with the shop because I don't know of any shops locally to me anyway, that have the same type of like relationship I've been. So my service, uh, manager, Mark, I've been friends with him for 15 years. Wow. You know, and the guys that the other guys that work here and even the secretary, they're, you know, half ass related or they're just, you know, they're in the family or they've been a close friend. And, you know, we can all hang out after work, have a beer or, you know, meet up on a weekend. And th- some guys go dirt biking together. Yeah. A couple guys go fishing together. You know, they everybody's close, you know, and there's no. There's no bickering. There's no fighting. If there's a problem, it's sorted out instantly. And then that's it. It's over. Yeah. And, that's and, awesome. You know, nobody holds a grudge. Well, especially in this economy and this, this weird world we're living in where, you know, the great resignation where all these people are quitting. It's so important to have that strong bond, you know? So kudos for you, man, for doing that. Seriously. I loved seeing that. Cause I yeah. saw that bringing kids to work day and I'm like, that's genius because as an employee, you know, you come into work and you do see the boss's kids there. And it's like, and your kids, I mean, most kids want to come see what dad does or what mom does. So yeah. why not give them a few hours to come in and hang out and see what happens and then spend the afternoon at the, at the house swimming. Why not? That'd be, yeah. I mean, that's a great day. So I yeah. always try to include, you know, everybody's families too, with certain things, you know, like John mm-hmm. mentioned last year, we did a big shop trip and, and this year it's not going to be as big of a, a thing. Like we did that barbecue and kids day. We'll probably do one small thing, but you know, um, I try to include everybody's family because it's not just us, you know, it's their wives, girlfriends, kids. It's, you know, everybody's included, whether or not you deal with them on a daily basis. That's just the way I feel about it. No, I agree. hundred percent. People come to work for people. They do, you know, and when other things happen in life and you're like thinking about going somewhere else, you remember the good friends that you have at the business. You know, yeah. I mean, seriously, I mean, you're with these people all the time and it's like, you get that, that closest in that relationship. And when somebody approaches you and wants you to leave and go somewhere else, you think about that, you know, even if the pay's better, it's still, you're leaving that family. You're not just leaving the people that don't care about you and you don't care about them. It's easy to leave at that point, but that's what we got to yeah. do is we got to create that glue that bonds us all together. Plus it makes life better when you like yeah. the people you work with. Yeah. So yeah. much better, you know, the, the latest full-time person that Corey put on, I guess maybe a year and a half ago when Chris two, I call him, he has two people named Chris. So I call Chris one and Chris two. <laughs> so when Chris two came in um, and correct me, Corey, if, if, if I misspeak here, but I think he, he walked in uh, and, and heard it's a nice place to work and you and him started talking. And this young man had not worked on diesels. No, he, yeah. He came from the automotive side and uh, right. He is referred to, he's a good friend of mine's a son-in-law. Yeah. So he was looking for work and, you know, I took him on a little bit. And uh, I think what, I think the story John was trying to get at was, so I had one guy that had been offered a job somewhere else. And I didn't know right. about it at the time. And, and uh, you know, he had mentioned it to some of the other guys here. Well, I think I'm going to go talk to, to Corey about it. And uh, the new guy, the new Chris, Chris too. He's like, I've worked at a lot of places. I ain't leaving here unless I get fired. He goes, this this is a great place to work. And, you know, that's I caught cool. wind of it. And, uh, you know, yeah, it made me feel good. But, you know, that's that's what I – if anything, I, that's what I've tried to do the best at is create a good work environment. And I've been in a situation that wasn't good. 
And right. I don't want that here. Yeah. You know. No way. Not, not since you can control it. Exactly. Being the owner, you know, I mean, you control that, you control that feeling that's in your shop. Yeah. That's awesome. The situation that Chris is, or that, that Corey's talking about, I remember real well. And I remember the Chris one that came and said he was going to leave and he was off injured for, with a dirt yep, bike. Yeah. He got hurt over the summer and he had been offered a job that paid. I don't, couldn't even fathom how they could offer him this kind of money, but they did and, and whatever. It's not that he wasn't worth it. Just, it was just out of my realm, right. but you know, we sat down with them and John gave me some great pointers and different things to, to, you know, to kind of, uh, showcase about the shop. And then I just, I was open. I have kind of like, I guess you could call it like an open book policy at the shop. Like I don't hide anything. If the guys want to understand or know about yeah. the numbers or the reason we charge what we charge or why they get paid what they get paid. And then I, I will gladly sit down and talk to him and explain it to him. And that's what I did with him. And, uh, he stayed and he's like, yeah, he says, I know I didn't want to leave, but I needed this as reassurance. Of course. You know, yeah. and he's still there know. today. He's still there. Yeah. He's still here. That's awesome. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. that's all they need is to know that they're important. You know, yeah. I mean, know that you're, that you're glad that they're there. Sometimes we forget to tell our employees that because well, yeah. they kind of take it for granted, you know, they know, they know they matter to Corey right. and in this particular situation, I got involved in it after Corey had done a lot of work on his own and he had a really good plan of how to present this to Chris. And I says, man, this is like, wow, <laughs> great. Yeah. That's cool. Just, you're on the right track. And yeah. he sat him down and you know, he's here today, you know, still here. It's amazing. What yeah. doing just caring for people does though. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Well guys, we are almost out of time here. So John, Corey, do you guys have any closing remarks that you want to say before we end up today? That went fast. I know it yeah, did, yeah, didn't it? It did go fast, yeah. <laughs> now, I, I just want to thank you for having having me on, and I appreciate it. Uh, you know, I, uh, I'm elite through and through, but, you know, and so is Corey. I guess I could say Corey, too. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, 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 you know, I'm honored to do this. I'm, you know, I'm glad, uh, glad I got to do it. Well, I appreciate you both being here, and Corey, I know it was, uh, you know, uh, a stretch of your comfort zone to come and be on here with us. But man, uh, people need to hear your story, man. There's tons of shop owners out there that don't know that there's a better way, you know, I just want yeah, to like, just like you, you know? Yeah. I, I would have never known this was an option never in my wildest dreams. And I'm so glad that, uh, I found out. Yeah. To be honest with you. It's Thanks. Awesome, man. Thanks Darren. Thank you. You guys have a great rest of your, uh, of your day. And thanks again for taking time out of, to be here with us and go pick up your dog, bud. So I will. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, guys, take care. Thank you. Take it easy. Thanks for listening to elite radio, the podcast for repair shop owners by repair shop owners. If you're looking for help in your automotive repair shop and reach out to elite, we provide coaching and peer groups, training for your service advisors and managers, and countless complimentary resources and a whole lot more. Visit eliteworldwide.com today and we'll see you next time. 